The Las Vegas Metro Police Department and the FBI are lying to us. They say that the Las Vegas shooting was the work of a lone wolf gunman, a 64-year-old man named Stephen Paddock, but that's simply not true. Over the course of this Las Vegas investigation series, I have shared interviews with you from various eyewitnesses who dispute the claims of the LVMPD and the FBI. Tonight, I'm presenting you with the first segment in a multi-part series to be posted on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These individual video segments will present evidence that there were, in fact, multiple shooters who worked together as part of a coordinated team and that a helicopter was used in the operation that was flying over the Delano Hotel during the exact time that SWAT forces were chasing a shooter near the ground floor of the hotel. But I want you to know in advance, there is no single smoking gun. After this series, you'll find that we are left with even more questions than ever before. We cannot yet say with certainty who organized and carried out this attack, but we do have some solid leads to continue pursuing. My hope is that by putting this additional information out to the public, that citizen journalists like you all will research the facts presented and will cooperate in a nationwide hunt for more information surrounding these facts. I cannot yet present you with the whole truth, but I can give you more pieces to the puzzle. In this first episode, I'm going to share with you an interview with a man named Chuck, who was staying at the Delano Hotel during the night of the Vegas shooting. Chuck was at the Delano in preparation for a Monday business meeting. I think you'll find his comments very interesting. Unfortunately, the audio quality of the interview is poor. So to help you understand what Chuck is saying more clearly, I have transcribed his statement to go along with the interview. On Saturday, more segments will be posted and more will follow on Sunday. These segments have been uploaded to YouTube and will be released automatically based on a predetermined schedule. I am releasing these videos and segments because to give you everything all at once would result in far less attention to the individual details. And again, my hope in doing this is that you all will join me in researching the facts surrounding these various segments and that you'll share your own findings with the rest of us in the comments section on the appropriate videos. To me, this is not simply about providing you with entertainment. I am asking for your help. Thank you so much for watching. Chuck, let's start with a brief introduction. Share with us a little bit about why you were at the Delano on the night of the shooting. And just so everyone knows, Sunday was October 1st. That was the day of the shooting. Yeah, correct. Okay, so you're at the hotel. Take us through what you saw and heard. Um, start with just what you personally witnessed. And do you know what time this was happening? Did you hear any gunfire? Thank you. 
All right, Chuck, let's talk for a minute about conversations that you had with others during and after the event. Uh, you told me that you spoke with some people who had also been in the Skyfall Lounge, uh, which is up on the top of the Delano Hotel. Why don't you start by telling the viewers just about the lounge itself? Just give us a walkthrough for someone who's never been there before. You mentioned that the terrace can be blocked off for private parties. Do you happen to know if the terrace was open on the night of the shooting? Uh, 
All right. Now, you believe that there was more than one shooter, correct? Yeah, I'm sure of it. All right. And what leads you to that conclusion? Well, first of all, the said when the guy on the 32nd floor was done shooting at 10.15, you know. But the, uh, the SWAT team that was engaging a shooter downstairs, the fact that I uh, personally saw that that was not happening upstairs. They were screaming at a shooter that was downstairs. But if they knew there was a shooter up on the uh, 32nd floor, was, they could have tried to evacuate us from the casino area, uh, you know, without having to uh, cause a fucking stampede. Yeah, and everybody knew there was another shooter. Uh, this guy, Stephen Paddock, he couldn't do it in two places at once. You know, they already had the main like, they elevated us on the uh, stairs to down by this point. I think, you know, that's what they say on the, uh, you know, on the police scanners so when you go back and listen to it on the internet. But, uh, this guy clearly had at least one accomplice because, uh, that came, they, they came through the casino. You know this. I think there was probably more than that, though, because, uh, we swat or some kind of, I think it was swat, some kind of law enforcement. They were over on the general side yelling at us to run because there was still an active shooter. And this is after that stuff in the uh, casino. So you heard gunfire on the Delano side of that that Mandalay Bay uh, Delano complex, right? Yeah, so that's the, the, uh, that distant gunfire, you know, which people say is coming from the top of the Mandalay Bay. You could hear gunshots much closer. I'm talking very close. You know, just you know, the, uh, the Mandalay Bay and Delano are part of the same, you know, big, big entertainment shopping complex. They're, they're joined together by, um, uh, by these corridors. It's, uh, it, you know, it's kind of like a huge shopping mall. You have the two anchor stores at the, uh, the end of the mall are, uh, actually, in this case, hotels. You know, you got the Mandalay Bay and the Delano. So the, the stores in the middle between the Mandalay Bay and the Delano. But, uh, you know, it's all pretty close together. From the, uh, elevator, if you want to go up the mall room, uh, you know, or really anybody's room from, from the, uh, the lobby there in the Delano. We're talking about only a one-minute walk to get to the casino. So all this is very close together. Chuck, can you say with certainty that what you heard was not up at Mandalay Bay, that this was actually events going on over on the Delano side of the um, of the entire complex? Yeah, but I, I can't say exactly where because I didn't see a shooter. Uh, but I saw the law enforcement with their, with their own guns, and there was some serious firepower. Yeah, they were not, these guys were not wearing the regular sidearm, so he was screaming at people to run. Uh, they were saying there was an active shooter down there with us. Uh, so I had made my way back over to the, uh, the Delano side. Uh, and you got people just jamming the elevators to get upstairs. So instead of waiting there like a sitting duck with uh, everybody else, I went, I went around the side here. Uh, you know, maybe five, ten minutes again. I, I'm not sure the time. But when I come back around, things seem to have settled down quite a bit. Uh, very few people were around, very surreal feeling. Uh, but there was still panic because the law enforcement was yelling at the stragglers like me to get to safety because there was still an active shooter. And this is right after the gunfire, uh, they, you know, that they say the gunfire had stopped over at the, uh, Mandalay Bay. You could hear some gunshots, and uh, I definitely smelled what I believe to be gunpowder. Uh, I've been told that you can't smell it uh, when it comes from a gun. You know, somebody shoots a gun. I, I don't know. I'm no expert. I don't own a gun, never shot one in my life. But I know that what I smelled was gunpowder. I, I know what gunpowder smells like from fireworks. I, I've seen shows even when the fire breaks from, uh, from real guns, but you can smell the gunpowder. You could definitely smell it in the Delano. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about this gunpowder. Maybe be more specific about where you were when you smelled it. Um, any details you may remember about that. All right. So you know, between the casino and the Delano is this corridor. Uh, it's not really long, maybe 30, 40 yards. Uh, I think the gunpowder was coming from in that corridor. Uh, I say this, there was no way that there was, we were smelling gunpowder in that corridor from the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. It was just no way. I mean, no fucking way. When we were in the direction the SWAT came in, they were moving toward the Delano, toward it, not away from it. They were moving toward it. 
cheapest. I think that was creating uh, distractions all over the place. Not even not necessarily shooting the kill, but just to distract the law and personnel and the SWAT and all them uh, and send them in different directions, kind of all over the place as a uh, as And I think that uh, at least one of these shooters fled through the Delano. But you know, I, I can't prove it. But it just makes sense based on everything that I did see happen. It makes perfect sense. Chuck, I appreciate all the information, and um, we really do thank you for taking time to share this with my audience. I'm sure everyone will find this um, this interview very interesting.